appropriate in this parliament. We are now at 53% debt to GDP ratio. Touch the sector. You have to have to bear the consequences of touching these other areas. Allow me, therefore, to go on and say that they don't affect just those, but they also affect the chapati makers, the muchomo makers. Therefore, regulation must be reasonable in its requirements and promote fair competition, not place undue burden on businesses or stay for their ability to innovate and grow. Proposals of concern under the bill include exclusion of regulation of native alcohol. The alcohol we produce at home, and this is massive in nature. The alcohol that your grandmother, that my grandmother, my auntie, my uncle all produce, it will not be regulated inside here. Additional licensing with strict preconditions such as 400 meter radius restriction. The question is, if you found the industry in that place, should we shift the industry because you came to that place? Because you need 400 meter radius? Restriction on hours of sale, packaging restrictions. The question we are asking, what are we trying to cure? What are we really trying to cure? We are touching the packaging, we are touching, touching the restrictions of sales of hours, we are tr touching radius. COVID has already shown us that if we men, and especially we the men, take alcohol out of bars and bring it home, the honorable members who are ladies will, will, will witness to this what can happen. COVID showed us. If that is what you want, we will buy the alcohol at 10 o'clock, come with it at home. We will drink from home with our kids and our mothers and our sisters in the house. Is that what we really want? It is what's going to happen. So we have to be very careful when we legislate these things. And we have enough evidence. COVID-19 showed us. Reps went up. Teenage pregnancies went up. Uh, female gender violence went up. Do we need more evidence to that? So, allow me now to go to the actual clauses. Honorable Chair, the it's called the alcohol sector. These are factories. Clause 3 says minister, here meaning minister in charge or responsible for health. The purpose of this bill is to regulate manufacture, importation, and sale of alcohol. Which mandate would be suited in the Ministry of Trade, Industry, and Cooperatives? Are we now going to switch our mandate and then take it to the Ministry of Health? Is now Ministry of Health going to be in charge of trade issues, industrial issues? The clause should be amended to minister responsible for industry. This is especially true with the exclusion of the clauses on awareness, rehabilitation, and treatment of addicts in the previous version of the bill. Honorable Chair, what about the application of licenses? Clause 5, subsection 2, a person who intends to sell alcoholic drinks shall apply to the relevant authority for license. And clause 22 also goes ahead and says, the prohibition of manufacturing or sale of alcoholic drinks without a license. Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, manufacturers currently pay for numerous licenses and obtaining additional licenses is going to be more expensive and time consuming. Again, what are we trying to cure? Application of multiple licenses is a complex and costly process for, for business, and each license typically comes with its own set of requirements, fees, and renewal costs. With the cost of doing business significantly increasing, the business of manufacture or sale of alcohol will become extremely unprofitable and taking away the opportunity for contribution to the national economy, not just the alcohol sector, to the national economy. Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, we haven't added something in this paper that you should be aware of. 
our members of the manufacturing sector are slowly moving out of Uganda. We have evidence of over 41 factories setting up in Tanzania, originating from Uganda. We have others on the border of Congo who are thinking it is better to produce elsewhere and bring to Uganda. Committee Chair of Trade, Industry and Tourism, you should be aware of that. We are losing industries. This is going to contribute to more loss of industries. And then we will come and say, we don't have enough money, enough taxes. What will we do? Again, go back to these factories and say, please give us more excise duty, give us more VAT. What are we really trying to cure? These clauses are redundant and should be removed or referred to the Licensing Act, Chapter 101. Honorable Chair, the issue of radius restriction as a prerequisite for, a, for the grant of a license. Clause 5, subsection five, 7, business premises considered suitable if they are not within 400 meters of a school, a health unit, a residential area, place of worship, and B, not situated at a fuel station. Seriously? So, this is what we are saying. If you are a bar in my small residence in Machindi, so all that, re all that stretch from the roundabout of Entebbe, all the way to Salama Road, please close and go home. This is a residential area. So get out. We don't need you. Are we really willing to really kill that whole economy? Two. So don't sell anywhere near a fuel station. So I, last time I checked the constitution, we say we're a liberal economy. So now we are moving away from liberalism and going back to communism. Really? Considering Uganda's physical planning layout, which places social amenities close to one another, this provision is impractical. Businesses already authorized planning pl building plans. The bill shouldn't attempt to impose an unforeseeable requirement. In addition, by confining operations to a restricted radius, companies may face challenges in recruiting, retaining, uh, retaining qualified employees, leading to potential skill shortages and decreased productivity. So there are over 50,000 bars in the country, and they are all nearly situated in residential areas. So we close all of them. And so the question is, if you're not supposed to be within 400 meters, where should we place the bars? We ask. You're not supposed to be near a school? Don't please be near a, a place of residence? Don't be near a fuel station? Where should we be? All right. Clause 5, subsection 7A and B should be deleted. Restrictions of hours of sale. Section 14, subsection 1. A license shall not sell an alcohol, a licensee shall not sell an alcoholic drink, all native drink, before 5, all 17 hours, and after 22 hours on working days, and B, 12 hours, and after 0 hours on public holidays and weekends. Ladies and gentlemen, you are all supporters of Premier League. Manchester United, I hear everyone shouting Manchester United, Liverpool, and all these things. Those football matches always end after 10 o'clock. So, at 10 exactly, at, at half time, bartender, close. Even if you're not in a bar, in a restaurant, close. Don't sell any alcohol as people are watching football. Go home. Subsection 14, part 2 says, Notwithstanding subsection 1, a licensee who operates a supermarket, there we go again, 
a depot may sell alcohol drinks between 10 and and 10 hours that is 10 in the morning and 22 hours thereafter sorry don't sell any alcohol colleagues we are going to increase gender violence of a nature you may not be able to sort and covid has shown us that chair and honorable members you want men to start drinking from home with kids at home really and then we shall be fighting alcoholism later on let the men go let the women go come back when you have finished your business and leave us in peace at home let home be our sanctuary let our homes be our castles let our homes be the places where our children can be raised without the fear of seeing their father drunk and they know what is causing the drunkardness. You go and drink if you must drink. Come back home. Go straight into your bed. But let us not show the kids where alcohol is coming from. They will then say, just like the European kids, where does milk come from? From the fridge. We are soon going to tell kids where does alcohol come from under daddy's bed we don't want that the time restrictions will require that manufacturers set up multiple facilities to ensure other value chain players are effectively served this duplication of infrastructure will significantly raise operation operating costs including rent utilities maintenance and transportation costs for particularly the employees over 1.3 million jobs were created by the alcohol industry and so forth. Also, the economic significance of the night economy to the national treasury cannot be underestimated. So we are telling tourists who come here, and we are busy driving this agenda of bringing in tourists, that Obos, in Uganda, do not dare drink alcohol before 5 o'clock. And if you dare drink alcohol at 10 o'clock, you are liable and culpable 